Let's roll. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Um, it's been two weeks since my last video. This is Blue Bonnets and Whiskey. My name is Kristen, and I started my fossil tube journey two weeks ago with my video number one. Um, and I had one subscriber, and now I have 308, and it's incredible, and I can't believe it. So I wanted to say thank you all for watching and for subscribing and for all the wonderful comments and encouragement that I received. It was just amazing to um, wake up every morning and see all those new comments that had come in and new subscribers, and it was just amazing. Um, I especially want to thank Michelle Garrett and Michelle Bindi and on Instagram. She gave me a shout out in one of her videos, and I think that's where I, that's when I had a huge uptick of people. So um, thank you for that, Michelle. And let's get started. So Blue Bonnets and Whiskey, it's not because I love whiskey, although I do love some Jameson and TX, but I really try not to drink anymore because my body just doesn't like it. Um, but this was our whiskey. Um, this was her as a puppy. And we lost her, she was about 18 months old. So we lost her in 2011, 2011. So she was a sweet puppy though. We named her um, from the phonetic alphabet, Sierra Tango Whiskey, and we went with whiskey. So let me get that out of the way. So um, welcome, and um, gosh, what do I wanna start with? Let me start with some fun stuff. In my last video, um, I showed you some of my works in progress, and I had the, oh shoot, I forgot the pattern, um, the Stingy Jack and Friends pumpkins, and I'm gonna grab them. Sorry, I'm gonna grab the pattern. Wasn't prepared. I hate it when people do this, but that's me. Okay. I was working on them. Um, this is Classic Jack, and this one is called Skinny Jack. And that's what I was working on. And I finished them up. And I actually fully finished them. Now you guys have to give me a little bit of grace because I haven't really done this kind of stuff yet. Sorry, I'm trying to get comfortable. This is not a very comfortable chair. So here is my skinny jack. Oh, it's gonna turn out awful. Um, I don't have anything to put behind it. I use my hand. So you have to tuft the pillows um, with a really long needle that goes all the way down through the buttons and up through the other buttons. And um, it's really hard to find needles that are longer than five inches, and that's about five inches. So I had to do a lot of finagling and use my son's help and some pliers and try not to stab myself with a really large needle, um, but he's finished. Um, this is Blackbird, I want to say, by Classic Color Works. And on the back it says, Trick or Treat. Isn't it super cute? And um, I think this is Moda wool on top. And these are the Just Another Button Company um, little pins. And I just stuck them in there because I really cannot count, y'all. And so if I don't use pins, I have learned to mark every fifth stitch. And this is classic Jack. Isn't he so cute? I wish you could have a better angle. Um, this is also the Moda wool. I just cut it. And this one tufted a little bit easier. This is 1031 on the back. I just adore this. I, these, I used um, fiber fill and a little bit of the crushed walnut shells to give them weight so they wouldn't topple. Um, and they look so much cuter in person because you can see them better. It's kind of weird on camera. And they just sit next to each other, next to my stitching spot. Aren't they so cute? I have to make more. My son is actually stitching one. He's 11. He is stitching um, this one here, Toothy Jack. Um, I dyed some Ada, so it's like um, a stormy, brown gray color and he's actually stitching it's really cool because he's actually stitching the face in this neon orange so it looks like a pumpkin lit up that was so clever so I told him to hurry up he's on the mouth and I'll finish it for him um, and we'll have another pumpkin 
Sorry if everything's shaking. Okay. Oh, previous finish. Before I move on, this was one of the first things I made when I came back to cross stitch. Um, I cross stitch as a teenager, but never really finished anything. And then as an adult, I decided I needed a hobby. So I picked up cross stitch again and I showed you my, um, the first coffee, but that wasn't actually the first thing that I finished. This was the first thing I finished. I made this for my son. It's just 14 count Ada. And this is the hoop that I embroidered it on. And I just took it out and painted the black. I just painted it black. Look at the back. Don't look at my stitching. But, um, I still have to finish the back off because now I know. But uh, it was so cute. I can't tell you how many times I had to rip out these things and redo them because I miscounted. That was really hard going all these distances, but it turned out really cute and he loves it. Now he wants me to do a Death Star or a Millennium Falcon or an X-Wing. I mean, he's got a whole list. I'm like, dude, I'm teaching you to cross stitch. You can do this yourself. Okay, so moving on. The other thing that I was working on and I had finished was House on Pumpkin Hill by Stacey Nash. And I didn't get the chart for that either, but whatevs. Um, but I finished it and I had a vote on the backing of the fabric on my Instagram channel. And everybody picked, it was either the top or the middle. And in person, if you could see them, the top made the fabric look too blue on the linen. So I went with the middle one. So here's the backing fabric that I chose. It's beautiful rust color. And here's my house on Pumpkin Hill. Isn't it cute? I love this. I was going to um, de-stash this chart. I think I'm gonna stitch this again. I'm gonna make it as a gift because my mom loves it. Let me get a little closer. I just did this with regular fiber fill because I don't have sawdust. And I haven't used trim yet because I'm not sure if I wanna use black or um, it's really this gold color. So, and I think I want chenille, not pom-poms. I don't know. So I don't have trim on it yet because I don't know what I wanna do for sure. But there's my pillow and it sits next to my pumpkins in my stitchy spot. All right. So, oh, before I move on, I have some local friends Cynthia in from Stitching in the Light. Cynthia Brew is her channel. Cynthia Brew Stitching in the Light. If you guys want somebody peaceful to listen to while you stitch, oh, she's the best. I turned on her um, Stitch with Me While I Pray, the scripture. I think that's what it's titled. I turned that on like three times this morning and just stitched along. Just, it was so peaceful. My kids were still sleeping. It was great. Um, so I met up with her and Christine Hollis from Hollis Hands Create is her Etsy shop. And we stitched together on Saturday and we had so much fun. But um, Cynthia brought these for us, her little primitive sunflowers that she'd finished for a craft fair. And she, look at the back, even the little burlap. They're so sweet. So this sits in my ort jar, in my stitchy spot. <laughs> so I have a little happiness stitchy spot over there. Okay, guys, I know I keep shifting my eyes and I'm gonna explain why. Because Cynthia told me that you're supposed to look at the little teeny circle, not yourself. So I have a hard time with that. So I put a little, you know, those retractable <laughs> measuring tapes. Um, he drew a little face <laughs> on it. It stuck it behind there to remind me to look at that, not myself. I'm a dork. I fully admit it. <laughs> okay, now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> All right, so I made a whole list, but it's kind of sort of all over the place. Okay, I'm just gonna move along. The other thing, Cynthia, her daughter, um, she gave her a bunch of beads and said, make some scissor fobs and I'll sell them. And so I nabbed one because she showed it on her video and I just loved it. And so I said, when you sell them, let me know. And like the next day it was up. So this is the one that I got. And look how cute this is. Little Jack. Oh, you can't see here. Look at the skeleton bead. Here we go. Super cute. And a little Jack on the bottom. 
and it's on a has a hook it's a nice big hook so you can put it on a thread key you can hold your scissors with it I love it love it love it love it and then the other thing that I bought oh so I have a local needle workshop but it's not like a, a cross stitch shop it's more a needlepoint or what is that knit when they the canvas needle art I don't even know what that's called needlepoint I suppose and I can get some cotton threads there and I can get silks there um, but I can't get charts or anything or even linen so I stopped by there the other day just because I wanted to look at her silk in person um, for something else I'll show you and I found a laying tool and I don't know about you but when I stitch over two threads I stink at it I will say kindly so I bought this and when you stitch with silks too especially I bought this to help my stitches look pretty and when I stitch over two threads um, I mean with two over two um, it's late it's like 10 o'clock at night um, completely lost my train of thought when I stitch two threads over two I have to stitch in frame or a hoop. I usually stitch um, in hand, but I cannot and have nice stitches. So I have to pop it in a frame. So Q-snaps are too wide and too heavy for me. They, they make my hands hurt because I'm getting old apparently. So I saw on a UK stitchers, I don't even think she's a stitcher regularly. I think she does I don't know, I don't remember, but um, she happened to be cross-stitching. And her stitching was in this, it's called a hoop frame. Let me see. It's just like a frame, it's called a hoop frame. So you get it on Amazon. And it literally is a frame, it even says, and when you're done, frame your piece in it and you can paint it or whatever. So it just is a frame that snaps together and it looks like it holds your fabric really tight. So I'm gonna try this because it's skinnier and it's lightweight and I hope it helps because I can't um, do Q-snaps anymore. It just puts too much strain on this right here. And I don't, I have a very small house so if I have like a floor um, stand or a lap stand or something, it's just, I can't, it takes up too much space. Okay, so there's that. And then the other cool thing, we're gonna call these the finds of the week, right? My find of the week. That was my find of the week, my hoop frame. I will try to link them below, but I might forget. So just comment if I forget and you're interested. The other thing is I was watching Emily C. Um, she, Eclectic Possessions on Instagram. I'm not gonna crinkle while I talk. And she said um, that she likes to make her own thread drops. And what she does is she bought um, like brown paper tags on Amazon and a punch and she punches her own. So I'm gonna show you, I bought them according to her link. So if you want them, go to her video. She's got them linked to her Amazon affiliate shop. I'm not gonna, and um, you can get them. So this is the punch, just looks like this. It has a um, little thing on the, back to lock it flat and you unlock it and these are the tags and you just I'll do one because I need it and you put the back so you can see it it's hard to do this backwards I'm just line it up oops sorry it's blown out guys just line it up and punch it and this one always goes flying and there you go you have a little thread drop and I will show you what they look like. All done. I'll use them for DMC. There you go. DMC, that's 310. That's the only one. I have another one up. Oh, because I did them for my daughter. Pardon me, but that's what they look like. Okay. I, don't, I should never shoot videos at night, but my husband is away and my kids are in bed and so I thought this would be a grand time because I have no time during the day 
we homeschool. And so they're with me all the time, 24 seven. So I don't ever really have alone time. <laughs> and so I'm shooting at 10, 15 at night and I'm really tired. I think I was up at like 4.30 this morning. Okay, so Emily C, go check it out. I'll link it if I can remember. I might have to make a link. I mean, a list, a list of all the things I supposed to link. I'm not drinking whiskey, I swear. It's just water. Okay, let's just move on, shall we? Oh, the other cool thing. Have you guys heard of thrift books? They're amazing. If you love books of any kind, go to thrift books because I go gaga. If, if we have units that I can't find stuff at the library readily or if I'm ordering in advance enough or if I know I'm gonna use it for future kids or whatever, or just because I love books, I will make a big order at thrift books and they may come in 16 different packages, <laughs> but I will get them and they're great prices and you can get coupons and stuff. But I found this, I found a bunch of cross-stitch books, but this one was amazing. It's William Morris in cross-stitch, and it's the art. There are some incredible things in this book, but I wanna show you this one for sure. And I thought I'm, I did mark it, yay! It's called The Briar Rabbit Picture. I want you to be able to see. How amazing is that? That is just so cool. It looks incredible and there's no back stitching. <laughs> Usually when you get these old cross stitch books, it's all back stitching. There's no back stitching in that one. There are a couple others. There are several in here that I want to make, but um, that Briar Rabbit one, I gotta show you these tapestry flowers. Oh, come on. Here it is. I think I like them because they're on a dark background, but I don't normally stitch on color. Can you see these? Poppy, tulips, corn flower, I think that is, and I can't see what the other one is. Those are so cool. But he has some, look at this. The flower garden, it's a glasses case. That is so cool. Anyway. Pomegranate bowl lids. Why don't we do cool stuff like this anymore? Okay, if you noticed a blip, it's because I told you I can never be alone. Um, my son came out here and needed attention, so I had to see to that. He has, I swear he has insomnia. It's almost 11 and he's still awake. He's 11 and I don't know how to help him sleep. He wakes up in the morning with just like these big bruised um, under his eyes. So if you have suggestions to help an 11 year old um, with sleep, I would appreciate it. Somebody told me melatonin, but then they also said that that can screw with your cycles. So I don't know. Anyway, um, all right, before I get started on my whips, I had some fun dyeing fabric. I don't know um, how many of you follow me on Instagram, but I, Dyed some fabric for Halloween stuff and want to show them to you. So let's see. Here they are all together. And I'm hoping these are coming out. They're coming out pretty true. Um, I just think they're gorgeous. They're perfect Halloween. Here's just a, a grapey kind of purple. Let's we'll see if I can get white in here for some color from white balance. Let's see. Yeah, I might like that. So that's one. This one's a little bit darker plum. Um, a darker grape. So you can't really see the modeling on this one. It's not really showing up grand. You can kind of see the modeling. What I did was I dyed them solid first and then I went in and um, poured some of the charcoal, I think it was charcoal, charcoal and navy mixed together um, to get some of that. This one has a project on it that I'm going to show you in a little bit. The pictures on Instagram are better. This green one, oh, look at this. I got this to do the holiday hoopla, the, um, the witch one. I'll show you the pattern in a minute. Well, here, this one. 
um, Holiday Hoopla by Bernard Bay. This one? I made this one to go with that. And it's really cool is the, well, like here, the back side is real crispy. See how sharp the modeling is? But the other side is just softened, softened. And this is the side that I prefer, but you could have a completely different look by um, doing the more crispy side. And these I just did on um, the linen that you get at Hobby Lobby. It's 32 count, I think. And it's just, it says it's Weigart. And as Christine said, it's Weigart for the outlets. <laughs> I think, I don't think it's um, the same stuff. So, I, if I'm gonna dye fabric again, I'm gonna buy a better base linen and, and go from there because the threads are real uneven and it's a lot more slubby. Um, but it's okay. It's okay for what I have it for. So having said that, I'm going to move on to my whips because one of the whips is on that lighter purple. So, um, Michelle, Bendy Stitchy stitched this or showed it. I don't remember which. And um, I have to do it. I We love Hocus Pocus. I've already watched it five times. I own the movie. I We love it. Um, so this is by Wild Violet Cross Stitch. And I don't know, when you go to buy this, it says, you know, pay what you feel. Pay the woman. Don't be downloading that pattern for free. So anyway, this is what I got. Hocus Pocus, and I'm doing complete color changes. Complete. So, this is where I am. I have a hoe, and I've started on the smoke. Well, I've got the smoke done, honestly. So that smoke, instead of doing, here she's got, what is it, purple? I did green smoke. And I'm doing the moon instead of yellow. I'm doing the moon in, it's some of my color cotton granite. So I'm doing a white moon. <laughs> Sorry guys. Okay. So this was the smoke and I'm gonna do the windows in the same kind of spooky spell green. Um, I think I'm gonna do the windows in this yellow color. Can you even see that? Was... Sorry, my light is blowing everything out, but it's really dark. Um, and the house is going to be more grays, um, than anything. So whatever, that's what I'm doing. I may finish next year. I don't think I'm going to finish this this year. I was really into Halloween and I still am, but I started thinking about Christmas because I got a Christmas bag and I'll show that to you in a little bit. And then I realized that I don't have any Christmas. So that made me want to go get Christmas. <laughs> but then I realized I had two. So anyway, now I just feel weird about Halloween. And my daughter is getting married November 9th, um, which is like, what, two weeks? Less than two weeks? Um, which might be why I'm a little brainless right now. But, um, so I can't, I feel like I can't think about Halloween. I feel like I just, wedding. You know, wedding, wedding, wedding. And Okay. So there's that whip, Hocus Pocus. The other whip I'm sure you've seen that I've been working on is Tombstone Mansion by Chessie and me. And I am adoring this. And I'm gonna keep working on this even throughout the year because I don't think I'm gonna finish it this Halloween. Here it is, I hope you can see it. The picture's not that grand, but these, these trees, these droopy weeping willows I have a bunch of family in Acadian country down in Louisiana. And I would go down there every summer and my godmother, my nanny, would take us and go and visit um, the different historical places and like Evangeline Parish. My daughter's named Evangeline. And Jefferson Island and all those cool places. And I just, that reminds me of those experiences the house, the trees, just that, that whole feeling. It's just Cajun. But anyway, here is my progress. I have got about half done. 
I've had to do so much ripping out. <laughs> so much ripping out. Um, there's a lot of specialty stitches that I did not know about when I bought this. I bought this when I was newly back to cross stitching. Um, satin stitches, over ones. These are all rice stitches. The black will go in between these. Um, all the pumpkins and tombstones are smeared across. crosses. The roof is smeared across. crosses. The door is, um, eyelets. Uh, so, but it's still fun and it's beautiful and I love it. I dyed this fabric too. It was vintage mocha, um, on the Ghana and I hated it. And so I over dyed it and I think it looks very swampy. It's a big mess, but the backside looks more camo. I don't know if you can tell. Can you tell? The backside looks more camo, but I like the front side. It looks very swampy, very bayou tesh. So that is my, gotta follow the rule. I'm putting my needle work in. There you go, Brenda. Needle work gets folded in. The law, I don't know if you guys know, your needle work has to get folded in. And I'm doing these all in silks, um, Gloriana, and I think I couldn't find one of the colors in Gloriana. I don't think it was still being made. So it's not a color in silk now, but they're just amazing. Um, there we go. This one. I love this one. Oh, so not using that one. It's just stuck in there because I thought I was going to. Gorgeous. So it's been a really fun project. I'm gonna keep working on that even if I don't finish. Um, got a Bitsy Bob this week from Kelly's Tadula. It is holding my, there we go, my cast off ones that are waiting to be taken apart. And look, it came with a little silver, silk. A little scissors fob that goes over here stay see i love how they're pumpkins super cute so as i have extra threads um waiting to be separated they will go on that Alrighty. what's next i thought i was organized okay that's really all i've been working on nope i lied i pulled out an old whip this was just speaking to me. It was calling my name. And then I was watching Brenda and the Serial Starter and they um, showed it, I think, is one of the charts that they picked up and I thought, I have that and I love it and I need to get it back out. So I did. It is by Threadwork Primitives. It is the 1842 saw sampler and these colors are what drew me in. Look how beautiful that is. I just love that so much. Okay, so this is based on a reproduction. It's not an actual reproduction, it's based on um, a sampler, I wanna say. Hold on. Adaptation, there we go, of an antique sampler from her personal collection. So, I am not stitching, stitching this on the called for linen. It calls for Weeks Dye Works. I had one on Weeks. And I guess it's not the new, it's a Weigar base. It's like tissue paper. So I'm doing this on r and &R. I have it written down somewhere. Hold on. r and &R Old Town Blend. First of all, here's my thread drops that I wanted to show you. These are all DNC except for I have pulled a couple of my color and cotton because I think I'm going to do some variegated. This one right here, this brown sugar, well, this is the DMC, but the Gentle Arts are brown sugar. And I think I need to have variegated thread for that one. If you look at it, first of all, look how big that flower is. You see the changes in it? I really think it needs variegated. And the other one I'm worried about is this one right here, um, which is camouflage is what it's called. So I think those two, I'm either gonna sub these color and cotton, or um, I order the dental art threads, they're on the way. But here is my progress. 
So this one is supposed to be onion skin. I don't know if it's because I'm not using the called for colors. Let's see, it's the same color as my linen. <laughs> I'm not redoing that. It's just gonna look that way. Um, there we go. So that one's gonna stay that color, but that's the full width of the sampler. So it's a small sampler. And this is on 30, what did I say, 32 count? Sure, let's say 32 count. Because I don't even remember what I just said. But uh, I really like it. I love it. So I had to pull it back out and give it some love. And when I put this thread on my thread drops, I just, oh, I mean, look at this. How do people make this look so pretty? I don't know, but oh, it's so gorgeous. Love that colorway. And this is in a bag that I made um, using the Primitive Stitchers video tutorial. Um, I, it's so Art Deco. I just love it. It's so fun. Okay. Where am I? Moving on. I'm going to check this off so I don't forget. Oh, okay. So I was talking about Christmas because I got this amazing bag from Socks for Mum um, on Etsy. Well, she's also on um, Instagram. Look at this little bobble. This little Christmas bobble. It has like little glitter inside of it. I don't know. Oh, it's so cute. So I thought I'm gonna put my single lone Christmas project in it. And it really is the only one that I've started. Um, it is Pomegranate Santa by Plum Street. And I, my progress is pathetic. And I told you I have a problem with counting. I've moved antlers, I've moved reindeer. I don't know what my problem is. I haven't worked on this since, I don't know, January or February. I've got all the reindeer done, but I think, I think this one's in the wrong place. Or this one, I can't remember. I can go back and count. One of them is in the wrong place because I can't count. This is Monaco, 28 count Monaco that I coffee and tea dyed myself. I'm not sure that I'm really into that anymore because I'd rather drink the coffee. Um, it's okay. I'd rather use RIT. I can control things a little bit more. Um, coffee tends to rinse out, even if you bake it. At least for me, it was rinsing and it was driving me crazy. So whatever. RIT, I will do. Okay, so what I was saying was I did that and um, I pulled that out, stuck in a bag and I thought, I don't have any Christmas stuff. I don't have any Christmas stuff. And then I was laying in bed, not sleeping, which I tend to do, which is probably why my son lays in bed, not sleeping. And I remembered that I did have one. Actually, I had two more that I love, but um, that I bought and just adored. And so I pulled that out and kitted it up today. And let me show you. I think this is an older chart and I may have bought it off of Stash Unload. Either that or I found it at, in the sale closet at my um, local needlework. But this one's called Reindeer Games by Kathy Barrick. It is a bowl of houses with reindeer flying above it. I remember how much I loved this when I bought it. And the colors are weird. The called for, and I don't have any of them. They're all the, well, they're silks, and I'm not doing this in silk because I'm just not. But um, I didn't have some of the DMC. So I went through my color and cotton stuff today because I have a very large selection. And first of all, I pulled out vanilla. This was one of the fabric of the month. This is not, it looks green. It's not green. It's just a lovely, creamy, not quite taupe. It's not quite there. I'm sorry, it's totally blowing out, but it's vanilla. Maybe if I put the colors. These are the colors that I've sort of settled on. I'm not doing the gold house. I think I'm gonna do this brick colored house and that's gonna be my red flowers. Um, yeah, you'll just have to watch it progress. 
I've never really substituted colors. But here's my teeny tiny start. Wait, it goes this way. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're never gonna watch me again. You're gonna be like, yeah, that girl's crazy. Okay, there's my start. It's a flower. It's beautiful and I love it. And I can't wait to keep stitching on it. So good, I've got Christmas that I actually want to work on. Oh. Us Texas people aren't all this crazy. It's just me. <laughs> okay, and then I had a new start. I told you I went to my um, local needlework shop. Um, my local, local needlepoint shop, let's call it that, for silk. Um, they're really sweet, um, but they really do specialize in just needlepoint. But first, let me show you my bag. I made this one too. I got this fabric at Hobby Lobby. Look at that. London Bridge. Look at the phone booth. And the double-decker bus. And the Tower Bridge. And Big Ben. And St. Peter's. It's, it's just amazing. Okay. St. Paul's. Did I say St. Peter's? It's light. Okay. Oh, wait. You gotta see my little dingly dingle hopper. Can I call it a dingle hopper? What is that called? A zipper pull? Double decker bus. I searched high and low for this on Etsy because I knew it needed a double decker bus. Okay. I am doing JBW Designs Ode to Britain. When I was a child, my dad was in the Air Force and one of the places that he was stationed was England. So I lived in England for a while. And I have some great memories, some bad memories, but overall, I really enjoyed my time in all the places that I visited. Here's a full view of it. And I wanted to have something to help me remember. So that's what I'm doing. I am doing this one on color and cotton, the fabric of the month, 36 count. And this one's called Dusk. And it just reminded me of a rainy, foggy English day. It's um, like a purple gray, totally not coming out right. It's just my light. This is my son's drawing. I don't know what it's a drawing of. I'm trying to get a white balance here, but it's not working. Whatever, you just have to take my word for it. If you go to her site, she's listed them now, Color and Cotton, Dusk. So there's my little pathetic start. So here was my dilemma. It's a pretty small design. Um, and I had a one-off that I had received a silk skein from Dyed by Rolanda. And it is 90, color 90 is the color. It's like a strawberry red, really pretty. Perfect to go with the purpley gray dusk of this sampler, of this linen. But I'm not sure, I don't wanna play thread chicken, I'm not sure. And I messaged her and she said, I have one skein left for color reference for when I dye it again. And when I dye it again, it may not come out <laughs> to match. Um, so she's gonna sort of hold that in reserve for me if I need that one. Hopefully she will have died by then and I can have that skein. Um, but just in case, I went, that's why I went to that store to look for silk. And I ended up with this Belsois um, strawberry shortcake. So what I decided was what I might do is take one strand of this and sort of interspace in the design as I'm working, you know, different motifs and just make it look more like variegation of the darker red. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Cause I think that's what I might do. Um, and I do put my silks in the bag. I just don't want to crinkle, crinkle, crinkle for you guys. Okay. What do we got here? Let's move on to haul, shall we? 
Um, okay, Jen's stitching niche. Niche? Niche? Who says niche? Niche? What do you say? I think I say niche. I think I say niche. <laughs> I don't know what I say. Okay. So I jumped on there and got the Halloween squirrel um, from the blue flower. This one was, I think, on sale. Love it. I think they're so cute, the little Dracula cape. And I think the owl was on sale too by Primitive Hair. I have the robin. I don't remember what else I have. I have a couple. I really want to stitch these and put them in my hallway for the kids to enjoy. I'm not sure if I wanna get this linen or get some fabric ink. I have a stamp that looks like this old writing and then stamp it on the linen myself and heat set it. I might do that. I might do that. I'm not sure yet because I won't be stitching those for a very long time. Okay, what else did I get? This was not on sale. I have been wanting this for a very long time. Halloween at Holly Berry Farm by Stacy Nash. Who did I see? Carol Saltbox, Saltbox Stitcher. She just finished this, didn't she? I watched so many floss tubes. I think she did, and it's massive. I'm frightened, but I love it. I mean, come on, a Halloween house, just like Tombstone Mansion. I love it. Kansas City Girl in Colorado World. Is that what it is? She's starting this and she dyed some threads for it and they look grand. Um, Fox and Rabbit Designs Botany Bay Sampler. Um, I had to get this because look at those ships and the colors in the corners and the manor house. I just love it. It is so cool. Those ships are awesome. And then I opened it up. Sorry, my nose is itchy. And read some of the instructions. Um, yeah, maybe when I'm 65 and I have a tons of experience behind me, maybe then I'll stitch that. But I needed to buy it. And then, um, my friend Christine at Hollis Hands, it's great because I can make an order and she will bring it to me or she'll ship it like the next day. So I wanted to try some more of the Primitive Hair um, linens. I'm in her early stitcher club, so I've had one or two that I've stitched on and I really like them. Um, but I wanted to try some of her other ones. So I bought this one is 30 count. It's called Crispy October. This reminds me of a maple leaf, a yellow one, after it's fallen on the ground and gotten dirty and died, you know. It's super cool. It's not quite so yellowy, and must, it's more golden in person. I really wish I could find something to make this color balance come off all right. If I turn the light off, it's gonna be too dark. Let's try. Well, the linen looks better. <laughs> I'll turn the light back on. Anyway, it's a nice big piece. Her linen is, um, it's really nice to stitch on. But, so that's Crispy October. And then I also bought this one, it's super cool. It's called Dark Spell and it's also 32 count. And this one, she prints this design on here. But what's cool is that will fit in a standard, what a eight by 10 frame. Isn't that neat? I just thought it was so cool. I have no idea what I'm gonna stitch in there. Um, but I'm sure I will get inspiration. Ooh, stuff all over my book now. Well, yes, I am a Ravenclaw. So I think she really grunges that up with walnut crystals or something. I don't know. Because that's all over. It smells interesting. That's all over my book. Cool. 
Okay, last thing I got from Christine. I'm following the law. When you see a Blackbird book, you buy it and you stitch it. So I got this to sister's one. I love this at first, first Cox Crow. Um, what's really neat, if you read the history in this one, is it's two sisters. Um, that's where the samplers come from. A Shields 1824 is here. And see, note that tree right there in the middle on the bottom. And then the other one is H Shields 1823. You see that border in the center? Okay, so those samplers are both in here. You only get pictures of the antiques though, not the reproductions. But if you look here, there's that border and those bowls of fruit. And then here is a Christmas one, but look at that tree. So they've pulled some of the elements from the two sisters samplers and used those in creating new designs. And this story was really cool. This one was about the Shield Sisters. Oh no. Alma's 11th great grandmother was astounded to learn that her younger sister Judith had been imprisoned and charged with witchcraft in Hartford, Connecticut. Unable to offer help. I can't say the name. Jeanette, Jeanette. There's a J-E at the end relied on her brother, Nicholas, to come to Judith's rescue. Fortunately, Captain Nicholas Varleth was married to Governor blah, 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 blah. They wrote lots of letters testifying to her faith and her good life, and she was released from prison on October 13th. So this one is called Witch No More, and it's in celebration that she was released and not tried as a witch, but I love those stars. Blah. I just think it's beautiful. Anyway, so that's a law. See a Blackbird book, black, buy it, and stitch it. So that is all of my haul. Um, oh wait, I got one other, I got one fun thing today with my hoop, my hoop frame. I got some more scissors because I'm always losing my scissors in different project bags. Can you see? Um, I don't know if you can tell, there's snakes sitting right here. Let me try and focus. Yeah, look at my giant hand, people. Oh, well, they're snakes. Super cool. I just thought that was fun. I got them on Amazon. You just search embroidery scissors. They have all kinds. Uh, so, before I forget, because I have reached 300 followers, that's still terrible. Sorry, guys. Technical difficulties. <laughs> because I've reached 300 followers, I am gonna do a giveaway. Um, so this is the chart. It is called a stitch in time. I bought this this summer and I ended up buying it twice um, because that's just what you do when you find something you love. It goes this way. So it includes needle and scissor keep and a pinball. And these are super cute. I think I saw Linda Jo, Pretty Southern. I think she stitched these or one of these motifs and it was beautiful. I have the linen and the threads for this for myself. It's all kitted up, but I'm gonna give away the chart. Um, for right now, I'm gonna limit this to inside the um, United States only just because this is my first giveaway and I gotta figure out what I'm doing. Um, but. In the comments below, don't say giveaway, don't say any of that, you know, stuff that um, gets spammers. And you have to be 18 to follow the law. Um, but tell me, what is something that gets you every time in a chart? What is something that you see it and you're like, oh my God, I gotta buy that because I just love red houses. I just love blue houses, whatever. And I'm gonna tell you what my thing is. 
So comments below what gets you in a chart every time and you have to buy it. So for me, we talked about Tombstone Mansion in those droopy trees. That's my thing, droopy trees. And I'm gonna show you the best droopy tree charts that I have found yet. Also, if you will tell me any droopy tree, droopy tree charts that you recommend, I would appreciate that. So this is one of, I love this one. This is by Lottie Daw. It's called Love is Little. And, oh, oh my gosh, look at that tree. It is such a quirky, cool tree. And the colors on this, it's silks. And the colors on this are crazy. Um, love is little, love is, I can't read it that small. Love is little, love is low. Love will make my spirit grow. Grow in great peace, grow in light. Love will do the thing that's right. So I thought that was super sweet. I will show you my progress on it real quick. Um, this is the one that is Weeks Dye Works. Weeks Dye Works parchment, I wanna say. Hold on. No. Yes, it is Weeks Dye Works, but I don't know if it's parchment. Guys, I can see through this. Can you see me? I can see you. <laughs> here's my progress on it. I've got that crazy bird and the moon. Um, I've never had stitched on silks before um, and or on this crazy loose linen. So um, this was a whole new experience for me, but I love it. I love it so much. And there's a lot in here that's off on count, but I'm not going to point it out to you because it doesn't matter. It's mine. <laughs> I, I love it. I highly recommend this chart if you can find it. Love is Little by Lottie Daw. So that's one droopy tree. And the silks that are called for on that one are NPI. I was such a dope. It says NPS on the chart. And I was like, well, what is that? Needlepoint silks. They were so sweet at the shop that I went to, my local shop. <laughs> they were like, oh honey, it's okay. All right, this one is um, I'll Fly Away by Lottie Daw. I love Lottie Daw. There's another big tree. And look at that bird in there. You can't see it very well, but oh, that tree just flops. I love, and I love the borders on this. It's so pretty. What are those acorns at the edges? I don't even know what this is called for. DMC. DMC Weeks. But most of it's in DMC. Cool. Um, Tree of Life Samplings, Emma Rose Freedom. I love that tree. Um, I have to read the story behind this to see. But I feel like this whole thing needs to be over here. I don't know, but I love that tree in the house. I may just stitch the tree in the house. And then I love that tree. I don't know. Lord knows I can't count. So it could probably come out that way on its own. <laughs> uh, Liberty house by Brenda Gervais. Again with the big flop. It's just one big branch flopped over. I love that. Okay, these aren't really trees, but I think they are. By the Bay Needle Art, Strawberry Hill. Look at that big strawberry tree. How awesome. Little tiny house, giant strawberries. My kids would gobble those up. By the Bay Needle Art, Peony Hill. Again, they're not really trees, but boy, do they look like big, huge, jelly green giant. Magic beans grew those suckers. Um, with that needle and thread, <sighs> sampler of the season, autumn. These are cool. Can you see the little beautiful autumn leaves and little squirrels? Look at the acorns and the sheep. This one's fun. 
the last one. The Care Child Sampling is the Willow Tree Sampler. Mm, this may have to be my next one. Guys, look at that. Mm, 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 mm. I don't even know what it says at the bottom. All I can see is the tree. Oh, it's a name. Hannah Lane. I don't know if it's a reproduction. Probably. Look how this one, it almost looks like it forms a heart. And look at those crows. Those are crows. Tombstone Mansion was supposed to have crows. Their feet and beaks were supposed to be stitched in opulent orange. I didn't notice that. <laughs> I had, they were stitched over one and I stitched the whole thing black and then I thought, they're ravens. Who needs crows? Okay, that is all for right now. I am going to um, do a, uh, an unboxing at, of the Color and Cotton Halloween Mystery Box here at the end so that you can shut it off if you haven't received yours yet or you're not interested um, and you don't want to see it. So you can go ahead and turn it off. But don't forget about the giveaway. Don't say giveaway. Don't say free. Don't say any of that junk. Just tell me what gets you in a chart. Um, and I can't wait to hear your answers. And when I do the next video, I will um, draw a name and send the chart off to someone in the United States, please. So, shut it off if you don't wanna, um, if you don't wanna be spoiled, surprised. Okay, so I did the Color and Cotton Halloween Mystery Box. I did her summer patriotic one too, and it was grand, it was so great. I'm so glad she's dying silks. Um, so it comes with all of this stuff on top and I saved it for a gift because I'm frugal like that. Um, and then a little sheet that tells you what all is in it and a $10 off coupon code, which I put at the bottom upside down so I wouldn't show you accidentally. So the first, not the first, you get a complete kit to do, oh, I'm gonna crinkle. Sorry. A design by Heart and Hand. And the design is, it's a special chart. It's called Creeping It Round. And it was designed especially for Color and Cotton's mystery box. Look at that black cat. Frankenstein. Okay. So you get the linen. It is called Cauldron Bubble. And it's not quite so bright. I think we've established that my, uh, everything's being blown out on mine. It's a really pretty green color. Uh, mine's on 36 count because I like 36 count or higher. And then you get all the threads and the finishing fabric for the back. And I'm gonna tell you what these threads are because I think the names are so cute. Boo is the white. Lantern Glow is this gold. Cornstalk. Candy corn. That's a lot brighter in person. Mm -hmm. I'll figure my lights out for next time. Pumpkin glow. Here, I'll show you. There we go. Candy corn, pumpkin glow. Frankenstein. This one I want her to reproduce. Haunted House. I don't care if she calls it something else. It's a really cool brown gray, dark, dark brown gray. And this one is called Black Cat. Angela, if you're listening, please reproduce Haunted House. Please, please, please. Because I need dark colors like that. Okay. It also comes with the hand dyed trims to finish it. There's a Rick Rack and Chenille and complete finishing instructions, which are great. And then these are hand dyed vintage buttons, all different sorts and sizes. Although I did look inside this chart and the actual buttons that she uses in this chart are in inside the chart. Um, let's see, 
Clem Scott Designs cat snips, and I took those. <laughs> Here they are. They are, look at his tail is one of those scissor things. Look at that. And they're little teeny tiny snips. Mm. Sorry about the lighting, everybody. So here, teeny tiny little snips, and they're substantial. Okay, and let's see what else. Oh, pumpkin needle minder, which I have in my Hocus Pocus project, which is why it has that needle hanging from it. Okay, silk, one skein of silk. I don't, like I said, I'm so glad she's dying these. It's like purple, navy, magenta, plum. But I have learned my lesson with my London tribute. Um, one skein is frightening. Okay, so that yellow you saw in Hocus Pocus came from here. It's perfect. So I had to pull it. Um, here's a, um, another green. It's like the green that I put in Hocus Pocus. There we go. More of a mossy um, yellow green. There's a gray in here. She didn't name her colors this time. It's sad. I like the names, but I can imagine how fast she's growing. I know she's going, um, offering to be in shops now. She's selling wholesale. I'm excited for her. Purple. And I'm gonna put these together so you can see a comparison. Like an apricot, a bright pumpkin, and like a russet autumnal orange. These are not the colors. Mm, somewhat. Really pretty though. Um, and candy corn. I ate the candy corn. Oh! And let's see, that green linen to go with the cauldron, the cauldron bubble. What size was that? 13 by 17. Tombstone is a beautiful gray. Beautiful, beautiful. This is a fat quarter. 17 by 26. So pretty. I know it looks blue right now, just like everything else. Socks with my lighting. Hey, look, that's better. Really pretty gray. I'm sure I'll find something to throw on there. And that is it. If you are still here, thank you for sticking with this train wreck. Um, what time is it now? It's 11.30 at night. I can't believe it's so late. I am going to probably have to figure out how to edit this because um, it's in two parts. And anyway, I really appreciate all of your subscribes and likes and comments, like I said before. I can't wait to see your comments um, on your favorites for what makes you, what gets you for a chart. Um, and I will see you next time. Bye guys. Hey, I have to go with the saying. <laughs> I mean, I live in Texas. I didn't even, I don't even think I said y'all one time, whatever. It's late. I'll see y'all later. 